If you've ever taken a glance upwards in the BHC gym, you've no doubt noticed an array of hanging banners. Where most schools would gloat over sports victories, PHC takes pride in its history of forensic success. So it is unsurprising that every graduate must participate in the school's annual moot court tournament at least once, whether they want to or not. For those who don't know, moot court simulates arguing a case in an appeals court. There are no witnesses or new evidence, it's arguing the law. Every fall, debate-savvy students like Ronan Wyrick dive into moot court for the first time. Here's Ronan to explain the details. Hand gestures are a huge taboo. Like, I've been told by so many people, just put your hands on the podium and like, don't move them at all. <laughs> I was talking to someone, they said they did a practice round with Dr. Ferris, and he told them that he was gonna cut their hands off if they kept on doing gestures. So basically you're trying to compare the fact pattern in today's case to fact patterns in preceding cases, and then applying those rules from those cases to show why you're right. In moot court, you've got like two or three or four of these, uh, you know, of all kind of presiding judges. And they can all ask you questions. And it's much more kind of direct interaction with them. So like it's, it's a weird kind of balance of like trying to fend off the judge's question and then like treating the judge as a friend who's trying to allow to judge for you. All right, Ronan explained the basics of moot court, but how do you get really good at it? To answer that question, we talked to someone who's personally argued in front of the Supreme Court. Here's Dr. Michael Ferris. I actually prepared for a real Supreme Court argument in this room. Um, uh, I argued the case of Biffen versus Becerra in 2018. And when I did that, um, we had my best recollection, something in the neighborhood of 250 or 300 questions that we had on cards um, that I could be asked. And so over and over they throw the cards in the air and shuffle the order and just ask me the questions. And I had to be able to answer those questions. My philosophy of coaching Patrick and my moot court has always been, if I prepare you to actually win the U.S. Supreme Court, you're going to do okay in a college journal. He says that you have to have both a good argument and you have to present it in an appealing way. It's a song, uh, by analogy. The, the, uh, a good song requires two things. A good melody and good lyrics. And if you have uh, an uninteresting melody, your lyrics may be terrific, but it, it, who's going to listen to your song? I remember many times uh, people going in uh, practice rounds and they were trying to use what I would call a fancy dancy voice. And I started asking them questions like, uh, who's your favorite football team? Uh, what does your dad do for a living? And all of a sudden their voice changed. That's your real voice. Use it. Don't give me this, you know, fake, you know, debate voice. I want to hear your real voice. Relax. Um, if you freak out about it, you can't talk to people. And the more you're conversational, the more you'll do well. And, and the ability to relax comes, starts with proper preparation. If you, if you prepared enough, you're going to be okay. Um, I'm a freshman and so I'm currently doing both moot court and mock trial but I've never done either before so they're very new to me I'm still learning as fun as some students find forensics others are less enthusiastic this fall's tournament winner Ainsley Stellman thinks forensics are important for Christians generally if we do have the truth and we are called to spread it and to share it with others then we need to be able to do so in an appealing way and in a way that's articulate and that other people are going to both understand and feel compelled to believe. We have to have both that ethos and character and the ability to convey what's true. And I think that forensics helps with both of those things. And I was reading in Augustine's On Christian Doctrine, which is a book he wrote for Christians and their use of rhetoric. And he's talking about how, like, why should those who speak falsehoods be the only ones who know how to persuade, whereas he who has the truth is unable to explain why that thing is true and point to the deception in his opponent's rhetoric and identify those like fallacies and things that he's using. Augustine makes the point that Christians should learn to use rhetoric, even if I weren't going to be pursuing a career that involves like the hard debate skills. I think that like everyone here should do that without reason.